glad you can join me today to talk about the most amazing story in the Bible, and actually in all of history, the story of Easter. We find ourselves during this Easter week in a rather strange circumstance. We have to stay home, we have to wait, school is canceled, and we don't know when our lives will go back to normal as they were before. And this might feel especially disappointing because it's also Easter. We should be together at church celebrating the most important event in all of history. We should be celebrating with friends and family, but we have to wait. We have to stay home. And as we go through this story of Easter today, I'd like for us to think about how this waiting time might actually help us to have a deeper understanding of the Easter story. So now we are going to go to the upper room where the disciples met with Jesus for the Last Supper. And we're going to see how the disciples feel about this time in the Easter story. It's Friday after Jesus has died on the cross. So come with me to the upper room. Well, here we are in the upper room. I'm not sure that it's very much like the actual upper room, but it's the best we could do for now. And though you might be listening to this on an Easter Sunday, we're gonna go back a few days to that first Friday, the first dreadful but wonderful Good Friday where Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Perfect, blameless, sinless, he died willingly for us. After he died on the cross, the disciples most likely came here to gather together. Now it's important to note that the disciples didn't have a Bible. They didn't know how the story would play out, how it would end, and actually how it would begin again on Sunday morning when Jesus rose from the dead. All they knew was that Jesus had died. The one who could heal the sick, calm the sea, raise a dead man to life. The one the disciples thought was the Son of God. The one that had been prophesied in the Old Testament the one who had come to save the world, he was gone? Imagine how they felt, sad, confused, fear that maybe they would be next. They were his followers. Maybe they would suffer the same consequences. So they met here and they waited with many questions, wondering how can Jesus be the promised savior king if he is dead and in the grave? Well, we know because we can read in a Bible today that this was all part of God's great rescue plan for his people. Remember back in the garden when Adam and Eve listened to the serpent instead of to God, when God had told them not to eat from that certain tree, and they did, bringing sin into the world. But God made a promise to Adam and Eve that it would not always be so, and he would crush sin one day. But the disciples didn't have this all written out for them, as we do. So though they had walked with Jesus, they had heard his teachings, they had seen all he had done, and all his love for his people, for all people, they still did not know how this story was going to go, go forward. All they knew was that Jesus was dead and buried in a tomb. How could he rescue his people if he were dead? Well, while the disciples wondered about these things and waited, there were three other followers of Jesus, three women. And it was custom for them to go to the body of anyone who had died to prepare their body for burial. So they had gathered spices and they were heading out to go to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body for burial. So why don't we go to a path that might have been like the one they walked? Let's go together. Well, here we are. I'm not sure if this was really like the path that would have been in biblical times that the women would have walked on, but it's the best we can do. Probably less pine trees. But the women walked here to go to the tomb to prepare Jesus' body for burial. They prepared spices and they were on their way to the tomb. They too probably felt the same sadness and the same confusion that the disciples felt. What was God doing? But as they approached the tomb, something surprising happened. There was a blinding light, 
and a great rumbling of the earth, and an angel appeared in white robes. He rolled the stone away from the tomb, and he sat on it. The sight of the angel in the empty tomb scared the guards so much that they fainted. Are you looking for Jesus? The angel asked the women. He's not here. God brought him to life. He is risen, just as Jesus said he would. Hurry, tell the disciples. Go, tell them he has risen from the dead. So why don't we go back there now and see if the mood has changed in the upper room, okay? Come on, let's go back. Here we are again in the upper room, and the mood this time is very different than before. The three women did just as they were told. They came back to the upper room and they told everyone the good news that Jesus had risen. Not too long after that, Jesus himself appeared to the disciples here in our upper room. He said to them, feel my hands, see my body. I am real, I have risen. He had risen for our sins. After probably much rejoicing and embracing, Jesus began to answer their questions. He told them why he had to die, that it was written that Christ should suffer and on the third day rise again from the dead for the forgiveness of sins, our sins, the sins of the future, the sins of the past. He had to die for the sin that Adam brought into the world at the beginning of time. He was fulfilling the promise given to Adam and Eve. Our great rescuer had come to take the punishment for our sins. He conquered sin, and so we too can be conquerors when we put our trust in him. Sin might still, will still be around us, but it no longer has to rule us. Jesus now rules us. He now rules the world. He is a conqueror, and so can we be conquerors too. So as you're at home waiting, wondering when we'll be able to go back to life like it was before, take some time to think about who you are in Christ. Ask God, what are you doing? What are you doing in my life? Even if there's all kinds of craziness, whether it's a virus or something else going on around you, Jesus doesn't change. He is our conqueror and through his Holy Spirit, we can be too. So happy Easter. I hope it is a good one for you. You are loved and we all miss you at the church. And we can't wait till we can be back together again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. From the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nothing, 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 nothing. Yeah. yeah. We are more than conquerors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We are more. Separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. 
separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nothing, nothing. Then conquerors Through Him who loved us Through Him who loved us We are more, more, more Than conquerors Through Him who loved us Through Him who loved us Here we go! What can separate us from the love of God That is in Christ Jesus What can separate us from the love of God That is in Christ Jesus What can separate us from the love of God That is in Christ Jesus Nothing, nothing